Uh, she absolutely needs no introduction at all. Uh, but Suzanne Grimsey is here. She is the PIO Chief Strategy and Community Engagement, Santa Barbara County Department of Behavioral Wellness, so familiar to our community and the stage at the School Wellness Summit. She has uh, been an integral part of the summit for the past decade, so thank you for your incredible leadership uh, and continuing to grow our school communities around wellness and, and health on the Central Coast. She is here today to do a spotlight on workplace wellness and continue our dialogue supporting staff well-being. So come on up, Suzanne. Put this on the podium for you. Thank you so much. So I have to admit, I'd never heard of the wonderful College Prep Academy, so I did a quick Google search. Also, division champions for track and field. And what I saw on the slide, 6,500 meals served from scratch daily in Harvest Hall. That was amazing. So I am not in the education world, I'm in the mental health world, so everything is fascinating to me here. All right. So last year at the summit, literally days before, if not the day before, the Surgeon General released the framework for the five essentials of workplace well-being. Super exciting. It couldn't have tied in better to the whole nature of the summit. So there was enough time for one of the presenters to mention it very briefly, but there was certainly not enough time to digest it. So I've had the joy over the last year of being able to spend a little more time digesting it. I have had the opportunity to speak to many different organizations about this. What's really neat about it is it's a framework. Frameworks are easier, I think, for all of us and our busy minds to follow. Mental health in the workplace is no longer a nice to have thing. It's a must have. Within the workplace, we manage daily stress that can affect our health, our pro productivity, our organizational performance. The stress can come from heavy workloads, long commutes, unpredictable schedules, limited autonomy, long work hours, multiple job responsibilities, and a variety of all kinds of other work-related challenges on top of the personal challenges we have outside of the workplace. And for those of you in this room, perhaps the challenges are even more unique. Maybe they include managing limited resources, keeping up with the changing landscapes of education, addressing the unique needs of students and the community, managing student behavior and promoting student success as only a few. When people feel anxious or depressed, the quality pace and performance of their work begins to decline. I don't need to tell you that. So no matter the exact challenge, our workplaces play a significant role in our lives. Work affects both our physical and our mental well-being in good ways, we just saw that in the presentation, and in bad ways. And the pandemic had lots of impacts, some that still last, had silver linings and not silver linings, but it brought the relationship between work and well being into clearer focus, and it normalized conversations about mental health in the workplace probably the biggest takeaway that I have seen. So some of the data that you'll see if you read the Surgeon General's report that we're referring to, say he, he cites some research that was done. 76% of workers reported at least one symptom of a mental health condition at the time they took the survey. 84% of respondents said their workplace conditions had contributed to at least one mental health challenge. And 81% of workers reported that they will be looking for workplaces that support mental health in the future. The pandemic gave time to pause. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look at the Surgeon General's framework for the five essentials of workplace well being. And you have a copy of this in your yellow folders as well. Each essential 
is grounded in two human needs. I'm going to go through each of them and spend just, just a minute on each. But I'll be very curious to know, because this is intended to span throughout all different organizational places. I'll be curious to know which of these kind of speak to you the most as being an essential within the educational world. So I'm going to ask after each one for a raise of hands on which those are. OK, the first one, protection from harm. Creating the conditions for physical and psychological safety is a critical foundation for ensuring workplace mental health and well being. The two human needs connected to this essential safety and security. Safety is protecting workers from physical or non physical harm, including injury, illness, discrimination, or harassment. Security is ensuring that all workers feel secure financially and feel secure in their job future. The components to this, the key components to this one, prioritizing workplace physical and psychological safety, enabling adequate rest for staff, normalizing and supporting mental health. OK, a show of hands uh, sort of relates to your workplace or relates a lot. I'm curious. Okay, and there's not a right or wrong. Okay, the second essential, connection and community. Fostering positive social interactions and relationships in the workplace supports worker well-being. The two human needs, social support and belonging. Social support is having the networks and relationships that can offer physical and psychological help and can mitigate feelings of loneliness and isolation. Belonging is feeling that you're an accepted member of a group. The key components to this essential, creating cultures of inclusion and belonging, cultivating trusted relationships, and fostering collaboration and teamwork. How does it relate in the education world? A lot or? Mm. The third essential is work-life harmony. Professional and personal roles can together create work and non-work conflicts. The two human needs, autonomy and flexibility. Autonomy is how much control we have over when, where, and how we do our work. Flexibility, the ability of workers to work when and where they feel it's best for them. Imagine there's not a lot of flexibility within that in the educational world. The key components, providing more autonomy over how work is done, although I hear the creativity of what's been done in so many things in this room. Making schedules as flexible and predictable as possible, increasing access to paid leave, and respecting boundaries between work and non-work time. How relevant is this one? A lot. The fourth essential, mattering at work. People want to know that they matter to those around them, students and staff, and that their work matters. Knowing you matter has been shown to lower stress. While feeling like you do not raises the risk for depression. The two human needs are dignity and meaning. Dignity is the sense of being respected and valued. Meaning in the workplace can refer to a sense of broader purpose and significance over one's work. The key components to this essential, providing a living wage. I love the question that was asked from the, from the last speaker is how many people are full-time and how many are part-time? Of course, full-time was the answer, has to be. Engaging workers in workplace decisions, building a culture of gratitude and recognition, and connecting individual work with the organizational mission. How does this one rank in the education world?
And the last and fifth essential in the framework, opportunities for growth. When organizations create more opportunities for workers to accomplish goals based on their skills and growth, people become more optimistic about their abilities and more enthusiastic about contributing to the organization. The two human needs, learning and accomplishment. Learning, the process of acquiring new skills and knowledge in the workplace. People need to feel that all the time, no matter how long you've been in your role. Accomplishment is the outcome of meeting goals and having an impact. You want to know that what you did had an impact. The key components, offering quality training, education, and mentoring, fostering clear, equitable pathways for career advancement. And lastly, ensuring relevant reciprocal feedback. How relevant is opportunities for growth in education? Thank you for giving your feedback to that. I was genuinely curious. So the Surgeon General's report emphasizes the connection between the well-being of workers and the health of organizations. It offers a foundation that can be used in a variety of work settings. But sustainable change must be driven by committed leaders who are in collaboration are working with their staff and as you know, are the most important part of any organization, the staff that work there, the teachers themselves. If you wish to really dive into this, the Surgeon General on his website has a ton of resources. There's a card deck of reflection questions. So if you ever wanted to bring this into a team meeting and kind of reflect on where people are, um, there's assessment tools, how you can assess your team or your organization, all kinds of stuff, really packaged well within this framework. You have the opportunity to inspire and lead change to create schools where students and teachers and faculty alike are excited to come and feel enriched and recharged when they leave at the end of the day. Thank you so much for all you do. I have three children who are young adults now and uh, I will forever be grateful to the schools that they attended that helped in their, their rearing. So thank you all so much, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Go the dance. Committed leaders. I look around this room, and I am just excited to see a room full of committed leaders ready to take this work back to our districts and continue to flourish what school wellness looks like and what staff wellness looks like. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Schools really are the workplace for both staff and students. And we know that work and schoolwork affects both our physical and mental well-being in good ways and sometimes in bad. This really looks at the adult worker through this data, but it could also be applied to students. Students in the classroom, that's really their workplace. Uh, bottom line is we've got to keep shining the spotlight on well-being for both students and staff for our entire school community adults and students alike. So again, Suzanne, thank you so very much for your continued support in this work. And you've just been such an incredible uh, part of the collaborative for, for so many years. And it's really a celebration of, um, of your thanks, or we thank you for your, for your incredible work as well. So thank you very much again, a true partner in what we do. Thank you.